Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is an exciting, exciting day because we are putting plants in the ground. Okay, finally, this is the moment that I've been waiting for for almost two months. I have a little schematic of what I'm gonna do with that first raised bed we built. I also brought outside some great supplies in this biodegradable bag including some newspaper to make more paper pots as I up pot some of these things. I also made some more of those, um, I mean, they call it toilet paper tubes, but I cut a paper towel roll in thirds and did the same thing. You just cut four slices in the bottom of a tube at 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, and fold it like a box, very simple. I'm gonna use these to plant some more onion sets and I also brought out some natural jute twine. This is going to help me make a trellis of sorts. Um, I think they call it a wigwam, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, I'm essentially going to be building a wigwam with some sticks that fell on our property in the fall. And this is going to be in the top left corner. It looks like a little star up there that I drew. I'm going to be planting my sugar snap peas around the bases of that wigwam. The reason being is because I want the area behind it, because the sun is uh, rising on the side of this wigwam from the east, and then it starts to set behind it. And on the west side, we have really tall trees. So whatever is behind taller plants will be partially shaded, probably only get four to six hours of sun a day, but they'll tend to be a bit cooler. So I'm going to plant my lettuce behind the wigwam because they will probably, I'm guessing, this is my first year doing this, but I'm guessing they will bolt on the hotter days. So I'm trying to prevent that by making sure they still have enough sunlight to grow, but they are shaded partially so it takes them longer to bolt or flower, which will turn the leaves very bitter and you don't want to eat that. But for now, I'm going to plant beets there because the beets should fully mature within 30 to 45 days. And by the time they're ready to come out of the ground, these bib lettuces should be ready to go in. So that's the plan. I also have a couple bok choys that I put into the ground and just use this old vinegar, this old vinegar jug as a sort of dome to help them um, acclimate to the nighttime temperatures over this past week. And they're doing great. They've already grown about an inch or so since I put them in the ground. So I think I'm gonna put a couple more out there. I'm gonna put a line of leeks um, along this back edge. They only need to be about an inch apart. So I think that will be a really nice border on the west side. I'm going to uh, plant a lot of carrots in this middle part there. I am trying to get as many carrots as possible. We eat a lot of carrots. I make a lot of carrot ginger soup. If you're here from Instagram, hi. I love carrot ginger soup, as you know. So we're gonna try to get a lot of those. I also have my early green broccoli coming out. Now, unlike a lot of other green broccoli um, strains, this one should mature in about 60 to 65 days, as should my bunching onions. So I'm actually, where you see X's is the broccoli, and where you see circles, will be the bunching onions. So I'm going to plant them interspersed in between. Hopefully the bunching onion should be able to come up in the corners where the broccoli is um, circular, but the bunching onion should be where those circles do not overlap. That's my thinking. I don't know how this is gonna go. Hopefully I can look back on this video in a year and be like, that was really stupid work. Hey, that was genius. It has been about a week, right? About a week since you've seen this greenhouse, I think. Not much has changed. You can see that everything has been growing per usual. We still have some leggier plants that I may or may not plant out. I'm still not entirely sure. My guess is no. We still have plenty, plenty, plenty of seeds to uh, go ahead and replant for succession planting. And I also have a few that didn't get that leggy even under the grow lights. So I might just call those a wash put those in the compost pile and move on from there. <laughs> Live my best life, as they say. I also started some uh, new seeds last weekend. So I started some onion sets in the uh, paper towel or toilet paper tubes because I feel like the 
cylindrical shape of, of that pot, basically, that DIY pot, is really good for onion sets. I, I don't know if that's true or not. It's just an experiment, but we'll see what happens. And then I have a couple cabbages and a couple summer squash that are getting started. So all great things. As soon as I move all of these plants out to the bed, I'll go ahead and replant some new things in these cells. Also, we are finally, finally planting the potatoes. I don't know if you remember, you probably don't, but we started potatoes back in, I wanna say February, in some water to try to, let me lift this out, to try to get some nice roots on them. And they're looking really, really good. Um, normally, I think you're supposed to leave them out to dry for a couple of days so they don't rot in the ground, but I'm just going to very lightly water them for a day or two because they've been sitting in water for almost two months and they still haven't rotted, so that's a good sign. Uh, but I don't want to kill these sprouts that I spent almost two months growing. So I'm going to hill them up with the compost that we've been making. It's not fully, fully composted yet, which is why we put our homemade compost at the very bottom of our raised bed. And I also found some uh, worms from around the property and I threw them in the raised bed too. So by the time the roots finally get down there, um, it should be well composted. But for potatoes, you don't really have to worry about that. Potatoes can even grow in straw with nothing else. You just put them on the ground, on top of the ground, and throw about four to eight inches of plain straw bales on top of them. That's called the root stout method. I'm not doing that because what I have in abundance on this property is leaves. So I am going to be using my homemade compost that I made with grass clippings and leaves for the potatoes. But going in with these two gold potatoes with the roots, I also kept the remainder in our basement in a nice, cool, dry place. You probably remember this box. All of the rest of the potatoes have stayed in this box and they have also sprouted. But as you can see, because they haven't been left in water, what they have going for them are these stalks, but they're lacking a lot of roots. So in my mind, correct me if I'm wrong, and if you know better, please leave a comment in the description box so I can learn from you. But in my mind, I'm thinking more roots equals higher yield of potatoes because potatoes will grow off of the nodules on the roots. So I am thinking that those two up there are probably going to yield, are probably going to give me a higher yield than these. But I actually have no idea. So I am happy I'm recording this because I am going to know exactly where I'm placing these seeding potatoes so that when I um, collect or harvest the potatoes in the fall months, I will know which one gave me a higher yield and I will actually weigh them so you and I can find out together which method worked best. Uh, personally, this method was obviously a little bit more work. I had to keep topping off the water, changing it out slightly. I used the water from the dehumidifier, as I mentioned, so the water was free. It's a negligible amount of water, but it's still free. Um, but this took the least amount of effort because all I did was I took some gold potatoes, some organic gold potatoes that I saw had a couple eyes on them from our grocery shopping, and I threw them in a box, closed the lid, and put it in our basement. That was it. So if this gives me the same or even higher yield than that, then this is what I'm doing from now on. But I had to experiment. I'm a scientist. I had to experiment. Enough talking. Let's get out there. Welcome or welcome back to the garden. Right now, the garden consists of this single raised bed. If you saw our video last week, we put this one together um, and the dimensions and everything I added to it are on that video as well. But you can see right now I'm trying to set up the wigwam. It's, it's okay. I think, I don't know. 
I ended up taking it down shortly after this video because it ended up being very flimsy and I've seen a lot of people using these types of wigwams um, in different videos so I was kind of excited to try it because what we have a lot of is branches <laughs> a bunch of branches so I'll have to figure out what I'm doing wrong maybe it needs more support maybe I should tie more twine uh, going down the wigwam we'll see but the first thing I started doing after I set it up was put the pea pods in as you can see at the base of the sticks now I'm planting some beets and I've moved on to the leeks so we're moving right along the leeks have some nice uh, tap roots there so I'm just pulling out the best ones that I am seeing and laying them out before I start planting them all in a row I'm planting them about an inch and a half apart and then I'm doing one row above it and it's sort of staggered so the space in between uh, the two leeks in the first row is where I'm putting the leeks in the upper second row. My thinking is that the strongest ones uh, will survive. They probably won't all survive, but either way, the packet that the seeds came in that I used to grow these leeks said that you can put about 10 in the 12 inch container. So in my mind, I'm thinking that this is plenty of space if they all did survive. Um, and while these biodegradable pots are amazing, I did decide to save those for another planting project since I didn't need them uh, for the leeks. Might I also add this little tool here is one of four that came with a kit that I ordered previously and it is just the bee's knees. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. I, I love all these little tools that came with the uh the grow kits i feel like they've saved me a lot of time a lot of effort and it keeps me from wrecking the roots you really don't want to touch the roots with your fingers um not to get all sciencey about it but you don't want to mess up uh the rhizosphere which is the microbes that live within the roots of plants so the less you can touch the roots the better and this tool just makes it so much easy so easy to just push them into a hole it's it's amazing i've moved on now to the carrot section and i started by dragging a stick across this area but it just i don't know it didn't do a great job so i'm just using my hands to make some nice clean rows and then i'm going to sprinkle on some seeds this um carrot pack the livingston carrots i've had for maybe six or seven years <laughs> when we first moved out to the Boston area I had this idea in mind that I wanted to do some container gardening and I used these back in 2015 so I sort of went a little extra liberal with those seeds because I'm expecting not all of them to grow and now we're just planting a couple more bok choys and as you can see these types of biodegradable pots can just be planted right into the ground very easy and that's it gave it a little water and look how beautiful nothing's happened yet hopefully next time you see this video there will be more now I place the potatoes about a foot to a foot and a half apart in a row and I went ahead and covered them with the compost that I mentioned previously and just to keep any of the wind which we get a lot of from blowing away the top layer of leaves I just put some uh, firewood on top and watered them like that once I see some sprouts popping through I'll remove the firewood and then as they continue to grow I'll keep piling on some more leaves this is the finished product I have the watered potatoes on the right and the ones that were in the box on the left and this is how I left the bok choys for the colder mid 30 degree nights. Okay, it's now Sunday. Happy Easter for those of you who celebrate Easter. Don't be uh, suspicious of these weird stains on this towel that's actually varnished from when we refinished all the floors. Um, so this is our junk towel, but it's raining outside, super dreary. So I decided to repot and start the next succession of plants indoors by the fire as I like to do. Uh, Jens was so kind as to repot all of the habanero peppers. 
Some of them are uh, bigger than others, but they were all kind of showing signs that they needed to be repotted because their roots were growing through the bottom of their starter tray, and a couple of them weren't looking too well. So uh, we repotted them in some soil and added some ash on top. Next, let me see. Oh, right here. I am going to up-pot the oregano. You can see they're starting to grow out of their cells here. And I'm going to leave them in clumps, but I am going to break the clumps up. Maybe two clumps per cell here. So uh, each of these cells will go into two of these biodegradable uh, cups. And then the chives. Look how tall these chives are. I don't know, maybe six inches, seven inches tall. Really, really tall. I'm going to... Hmm, should I up-pot these? Or should I just plant them directly outside? Hmm. Jens, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? About planting the outside? The, the chives. Outside. Yeah. Should they just go direct outside or should I up pot them? They're pretty big. They can probably hold their own outside. Okay. We're probably going to plant these outside after it's done raining. But these, at the very least, I'm going to break up into smaller clumps and grow them in bigger pots. Moving on, I have about six of these rolls. I've shown you how to make these, I believe, in this in the video I posted last week. And these I showed you in my very first uh, garden video, which I'll link here. But I made two of these, so that's eight total of this cylindrical shaped container, which I'll be using to grow eight more onion sets. Uh, one of them has already started sprouting, as you can see, so that one's definitely going in. It looks like a white onion. And I think I only did purple and white onions. I don't think I did any yellow onions, so I'm probably going to do a couple of those this time. And so, yep, that's eight of those. These are the seeds that I've already started, but I want to do more of for a couple of reasons. So the spinach, um, I would say about 50% of the seeds that I actually planted grew. And of those, they didn't look too hot until very recently. In the last week or so, they started to do a lot better. So I'm going to take that as a sign that it's spinach growing season. And these seeds are probably going to thrive in the weather right now. I'm gonna go ahead and plant some more of those. Uh, something you didn't see me pick up, but I just got in the mail last week, was this uh, variety pack of zucchinis. It's actually about 12 varieties, and they're all edible. And I'm really excited because I haven't tried most of these varieties. I'm used to, you know, the green and the yellow zucchinis and things like that, but some of these gourds or eating zucchinis look really interesting and I kind of want to try to cook with them and see what their flavor's like. We also got a five pack of cabbage, which I might not have shown you yet. So it, it was a five pack like this. As soon as I got them, I believe the very next day, I planted these two. So Jen's chose this one because we like to make kimchi and this is the perfect type of cabbage for that. And then this one I chose, I'll be honest, because it looks really pretty and I can't recall any time that I've had this type of cabbage. I usually have this kind, which I think most of us see in the supermarket, or this one. But this one, I don't think I've eaten before. So we grew two of each and they started to sprout already. So I decided this week I'm going to grow two more varieties, Red Acre and Copenhagen Market, which like I said is the traditional one. And none of my parsley grew. I planted a lot of seeds of parsley and none of them grew. I don't think that's Burpee's fault. Everything that I purchased from Burpee, which is most of these seeds, um, has sprouted something for me. At least something has sprouted, but this did not. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to try it one more time. Um, if it doesn't work, then I don't know. Another variety, maybe get a starter plant, something that's already been growing. We'll figure it out. Basil, both of these varieties grew really well. If, you'll, if you've seen some of my pre previous videos, they really seem to like these cells and the uh, light cover that was on it. So they were growing really well, but then when I try to put them outside, 
a lot of them died. So I'm going to go ahead and start these again this week and hopefully boost the number of basil because these weren't just for our herb garden. I was actually really excited to plant these in the front of the house with all the flowers and stuff because I thought it would look really pretty and then be, also be functional. So um, I think that's everything. I think that's all that I'm going to plant today. <laughs> so if you've seen my previous videos, you know I am really reckless with these trays. <laughs> but I also just wanted to make sure that you saw how this process goes from beginning to end. So first I like to mix some vermiculite with some organic soil. It helps with uh, root growth and water retention. And it's um, it just looks more like potting soil. Do you know what I mean? The two types of things you'll normally find in potting soil I think are perlite and vermiculite. But Today I'm going ahead and using the vermiculite. That's what I have on hand and a little goes a long way with it for real. So um, even though it takes me a while, I like to mix them in these little Dixie cups and portion out uh, little bits of it into the trays as I go. Uh, it just keeps my space nice and clean. I like to keep a tidy area. If you've seen me in the lab, you know that this is the case. Um, I'll finish an experiment and walk away and you'll walk by and be like, is she even working? That's, that's kind of how crazy I am. But I, I really do like a tidy space. So anyway, I just decided this time I'm just going to leave the whole process in. I'm going to let you watch it. It's, you know, going to be a chill vibe for the last, I don't know, what do I have left here? Oh, six minutes. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a chill vibe for the next six minutes. So let's see what royalty-free jams I can pop on for you.
so much for tuning in for this video. I truly do appreciate your uh, presence <laughs> and your feedback. If you give it to me, I'm always, always uh, welcoming constructive criticisms, feedback, anything like that. But I hope you're learning something. I know I'm learning a ton. Uh, if you're experienced in gardening, please go ahead and let me know what you're planting this season. I'd love to know. Uh, if you're enjoying these videos, please give it a like, subscribe if you're new, and I hope to see you all next week.